So today's video, I'm going to be reacting to somebody else's real life UK budget. Now, interesting enough, when I was searching for possible videos to react to, I've done a couple of these in the past where basically I'm watching people's budget, their spending habits, other things I think would be really interesting for you and giving my honest reaction as I watch it there for the first time. Now, I found this budget by a lady called Home with Shan. So she's got a YouTube channel, she's got an Instagram as well that I'll leave down below that you can go straight to the video and watch it for yourself. But I'm actually actually going to watch her video now, how they manage money. And I'm going to give you my honest thoughts about maybe things they could do better, things that they're doing excellent, and just my overall guidance that I could give to her based on her habits and what she's doing with her money right now. Her video is called How I Budget My £30,000 Salary, Secrets to Save Money and Still Have Fun. And she also mentions Stocks and Shares, ISA in the title. This is probably a girl after my own heart. So let's watch and enjoy. my channel uh, so my name is Shan if you don't know me I'm from home with Shan over on Instagram and today I'm going to be talking about how I like to save my money um, and where I put it and how I try to invest it and all that kind of good stuff so already she's got all the habits that I love save investing okay and I'm gonna judge she's probably in her 20s 30s I haven't known for sure but yeah she looks like normal people and I love the fact already she's going to share a budget 30,000 pounds is probably quite a bit above the UK size salary average. I think the average is about 20 to 25 um, if you've got that median from London of course coming all the way to Scotland and everything. So it could be a good typical budget that we're going to see here. I'm excited. Um, so at the moment I have, I'm saving up for a few like big things that are going to be happening. So I want to get a new car for example. We're going to be moving house at some point this year. So there are a few things that I am saving for. Um, but I still want to be able to have fun and enjoy my life whilst I'm saving. So basically so key right the key point there she wants to enjoy life whilst we're working on these goals absolutely completely agree with that and i think that's so important with any budget okay we're going to look at her personal money coming in and how they're allocating it you've got to have fun money you've got to also work towards goals all these great habits need to be in every budget please don't wait until some event in the future um but don't wait till you've paid off all your debt before you start saving don't wait to pay off all your old debt and you're still investing like cover as many bases as you you can but attack the focus area whilst doing all these great habits that you want to be doing anyway right basically I'm here on my tips I guess as to how to save without really noticing not having that money if that makes sense so yeah and if you are interested also I spoke about sort of the importance of saving and knowing what your income is if you're actually trying to buy a house. I'll link the video here if you're interested in watching it. It's all about how to buy a house in the UK, the house buying process, but it all starts with savings. This is more of an in-depth video about actually saving your money, but still enjoying life whilst you're doing it. So I completely love her. I think she's wanting to save, enjoy money, and then still work towards great goals. And you know, she's got videos of it saving a house. A lot of people can relate to this. One of the things that I wanted to talk about is a spreadsheet. So I mentioned this again in the video that I spoke about earlier about how to buy a house in the UK. But I wanted to go into a little bit more detail here um, about this spreadsheet. So I've actually downloaded the spreadsheet from Patricia Bright's new YouTube channel, Ray. I'll link it down in the description box below. I did actually have to pay for that spreadsheet, but it's so worth it. Oh my God, it is so good. It was £1.99, I believe, and it literally has sorted me out. It's sorted me out for the whole year. Basically, it's got columns for your income and then columns for your outgoings, and then also columns for how much you want to be saving each month, where you're putting the savings, what your short term and long term goals are. It is so, so good. Set out exactly how much you earn, be honest with how, what your outgoings are, so how much you spend on petrol, how much you spend on food shopping, how much you spend on alcohol, how much you spend on any memberships, subscriptions, food, like everything, like going out, socialising, all of those kind of things. Like I always like to put a budget of like 50 to 100 pounds for socialising because yeah, I do that every month and I'm going to budget for it. 
Yeah, spot on, right? So first of all, love her, the fact she's got a spreadsheet, great spreadsheet. Incoming has got to go there. Every single outgoing in your factory. She's even put things like going out on her spreadsheet because it happens every month. We're not doing without fun, even though we're working on great goals. So I love a spreadsheet. And that being said, if you don't watch my budget with me videos where I show you how I budget and actually manage our money, I'm going to link to some down below in the description bar. But the other thing is check out my autopilot money spreadsheet systems. If you're wanting something that helps you manage your money, pay off debt, work towards financial freedom, whole host of things, that spreadsheet is going to really help you that I put together. So that is down below as well. And then after you've put every single one of your outgoings, including your savings, whether that's £100 or whether that's £500 into these different places, wherever you want to put them, whether that's your savings account or your stocks and shares ISA, then at least you know right at the end all of your outgoings, what you've got left over. You can do whatever you want with that. You can go and buy something for your house. You can go and buy your clothes, like extra clothes. You can go and buy some nice makeup. You can go out for a really fancy meal. You can do whatever you want with that money or you can back you can reinvest it in yourself if you wanted to download the same spreadsheet that I've got for my savings I can link where you can purchase it in the description box below but if you also wanted something that was free Google Sheets actually has loads of budgeting tools on there and if you don't know what Google Sheets is it's an extension of Google obviously and it's basically like Excel but free and it's online and it's run by Google that's basically the best way to describe it and I don't actually have Excel or Word or any of the Microsoft sort of Google Sheets is really really good and like I said they've got loads of templates for budgeting and I found them really really helpful in the past so that's another good point, right? She's talked about overflow, which I'm a huge supporter of as well. And that's the mindset you need to be saving and investing. So she's talked about her priorities first. So she's got her budget, incoming, outgoing. She's factored in some things to do with life, you know, going out, petrol, food, everything like that. What's left over after she's invested and saved is then her overflow, that excess, we call it. And that is then your money to do whatever else you want with. I completely believe you should have fun money. So that's no way that you have to feel guilty about money every single month even if it just ends up being five pounds while you pay off debt you have to have that overflow that guilt-free money then if you decide to invest more or invest in a company idea invest in education you've got all those different opportunities for you and it's basically the kind of a money stacks method you know i believe in those six columns you've got your essentials you've got financial freedom long-term goals with your money in short term education giving and fun money so i think that would be one area maybe looking into is she making sure that the priorities for family as well are covered and their further life that they want to develop excess is important and even how we focus and divide that would then have a huge impact as well so yeah definitely get a spreadsheet and you'll be golden get a spreadsheet you'll be golden i can't say any more than that your savings accounts so i like to have two separate savings accounts and then also a stocks and shares isa i like to bank with the same bank as i do in my current account that way i can have a direct debit set up to go into my savings account every month and i don't even have that money to spend in the first place it goes straight away into my savings and i don't even see it however i can see it on my banking app that i use all the time the savings account that i have is 2.5 percent interest which is really really good that's a really great savings rate, 2.5%. Absolutely jump on that. You probably find that she's going to explain that there'll be caveats for that. So it tends to be that if you have above 1%, even if you have about 0.5% or above, you might have to lock away your money or commit to a monthly amount. But she's done the smart thing. She's looked out for a savings account that's going to give her the maximum return, 2.5% is incredible right now. So I'm really excited to see she's investing in the stock market that she's gonna cover later. And she's also locked down a savings account, multiplying their money every year with a really great rate as well. The only thing is to get the 2.5%, you have to put 200 pounds into the savings account every month and not withdraw any money. And then after 12 months, you get 2.5% return. So the second bank account that I have with Santander is actually something that I dip into on and off throughout the month if I need to. And the savings account isn't just for saving, I also use it to buy things, bigger purchases that aren't month, things that I buy every month. So for example, this month I actually bought a, a MacBook Pro, well I traded, I traded in my old MacBook Air, and then I actually bought a MacBook Pro 
that cost me about £250 on top of the trade-off. So already she's using really great habits with her money anyway. It looks like she's saving. She's got another account where she's actually doing like kind of smaller purchases, not like saving for a house, but these longer term things like um, upgrades to her home, upgrades for her business. And I love the fact she's talking about secondhand items in a kind of normal way. Like if you're going to invest in something, do you need to buy brand new? There's probably somebody else who has given you or who wants to get rid of something similar and you could kind of exchange for that. So she's really using her money smarter already for these purchases that perhaps could be quite expensive. She's thinking about actually what's the best way for me to get value from her money. Great, great strategy overall. And then what I also do is actually I have an app called money box and I love this app but I have the stocks and shares ISA version so there are lots of different lots of different ones you can use with money box but I've got the stocks and shares ISA one what I've set it up to do is take out 50 pounds on payday so 50 pounds on payday to me isn't a lot so I so I get paid monthly 50 pounds on payday so I don't even see that money it goes straight into this stocks and shares ISA um, and then 50 pounds and that gets invested wherever they decide to invest it and then each week it also takes out an extra five pounds and five pounds a week is nothing people pay that for like food coffee and whatever things like that so i decided to invest that in two stocks and shares as well so in total 70 pounds comes out of my account each month now what you can also do i don't actually have this set up at the moment but what you can actually do is have it round up your purchases as well so for example if you purchase something from the shop for one pound 95 the extra 5p that would have made two pound actually it gets taken out of your account and then invested into some of the stocks and shares as well so i would say here so it's fantastic to investing stocks and shares isa the great thing is you can invest in the stock market and it's tax efficient. So I've covered this lots of times and she's doing the right thing. She's opened an account that allows her to invest in the stock market up to £20,000 per person per year of deposits. It then grows depending on what funds, individual stocks, bonds, what you're doing with the money. Now Moneybox is great. It's kind of seen as a, a kind of beginner level investor because it does a lot of the work. A lot of their options are they will help you choose what to invest in based on your lifestyle or your risk she's talking about a couple of things that you know it will do the rounding up mechanism as well that's an option within money box so every time you purchase or every time you buy something maybe a coffee it will round up and then invest that difference which is great if you simply can't believe that you've got the capacity to regularly invest or save on your own you need someone to do it for you i love the fact that the first of the month is a priority she's investing straight away she's investing for her future and the thing about investments in the stock market you're getting better better hopefully better than inflation better than what your value of your money will be worth in a couple of years that in terms of what the return could be now what i would say is she hasn't gone into detail about what actually she's investing in and my concern is that she's letting money box do it all for her and money box and these beginner level ones are fantastic to learn the habits but the smaller the amounts that they're taking from you their charges in line with that could be quite big. So for example, if they invested for her 50 pounds, but their charge was actually maybe 1% or 2%, you need to really dive in and see their charges, what they're investing in as well. You know, you don't want to be losing more and more of your money just because you're not aware of what you're investing in. You know, there are incredibly low fees out there for investing in similar stocks and similar funds because they're all pretty much available on most platforms. So I would love to see her take control of what actually she's investing in. Maybe actually getting a bit granular. So what are Moneybox actually investing her funds in? Does she know the particular index fund? Does she know, you know the flavor of bond or individual stocks? So that also she can watch how much of the charges and fees are that they're charging her and compare it to other providers out there because your money, we want to keep it most of in our pocket, especially with investments where it's gonna grow, hopefully, you know, five, seven eight ten percent year on year depending on what you pick and obviously your risk tolerance so i'd love to see her know just a bit more about her investments and take a bit more management over it to really drive the success of it and not give so much away potentially to money box or let somebody else decide what is right for her money goals i can tell you now that in my stocks and shares i saw i've got 638 pounds so my current earnings from that is actually 63 pounds which is actually 10 percent of what I've got in my um, stocks, and 
stocks and shares ISA. So the great thing about her principle is it's a habit, it's a monthly habit. She's taking advantage of the principle of dollar cost or pound cost averaging. So when you're consistently buying the same stock over a period of time spread out, you're going to basically spread out those kind of rises and falls in the price. If you dump lump sum, if you dump lump sums in there instead, potentially you could get it on its high point compared to its low point and you won't feel the value of a smoothing out all over time if you like but 10% is incredible year on year growth fantastic right now as well following the pandemic as I film this I really hope that a lot of people have benefited from cheaper rates cheaper fun costs and things like that but as I say I hope she's going to dive in and explain a little bit more about what actually is she investing in and is it right for her age her risk her goals and things like that so I've made £63 just from putting it on this app. I could have saved that money in a savings account and made no money, but actually I've made £63 just from putting that money into this Stocks and Shares ISA. And another key thing, she's talking about she's made money. Remember, stocks and shares, the only two days that matter, the day you buy them and the day that you sell them. Anything estimated on an app or your portal is only if you were going to actually sell them that day. Completely your capital's at risk. So bear that in mind, you haven't made money, it's not profit there until the day you actually sell and you get the relative value for it. And because it does it incrementally, like, month by month it only takes a little bit you really don't notice it taking it out of your account and then all of a sudden you look on your app and you've got 600 pounds and then you're like where's this money come from like it's such a good way of saving money and you're really investing your money in the right places you've got like low risk which gets you a low return you've got medium risk which gets you a medium return and then you've got high risk which gets you a high return but obviously it's called risk for a reason and it does mean that if you if the company that it decide the app decides to invest you in goes bust then you don't get a return on your money and you could actually lose some of your money so this is why stocks and shares is important to actually understand because it's not just put your money get a return because you could actually lose some of your money so, so an important thing i think I would love her to think a bit more about the stock market and how it's working and that's sometimes the issue people think that they're getting given the value that they see it's not it's the relative value of that stock or that fund that you've invested in on that particular day if it went lower tomorrow then the amount she could have get would be 10 pounds or 15 pounds so it's all relative to the, that actual day you're wanting to sell so never think of it as that money is there as a certainty it's only about are you actually selling that day to get it. It's purely an estimate based on the market, you know, the buyer seller price that day. The other thing to bear in mind is I lack the information and maybe she doesn't know actually what she's investing in. We saw the breakdown of the generalization. So global shares, global bonds, a bit about the housing market, but actually what funds are we investing in? What index funds? What companies? Because then that allow you to see, first of all, are these actual stocks and shares you want to be involved in? Particularly important if you want ESG funds, you know, things that for economical social governance, if you're particularly keen on not investing in companies that are to do with firearms or maybe certain, certain employer trading standards, things of an ethical nature, perhaps you've even got religious beliefs that mean you, you want to only support companies that follow certain criteria as well. Uh, we need to really deep dive and find out what we're actually investing in because that takes away also the element of somebody else doing it for you and a, you know that kind of non-responsibility of it find out what you're investing in make sure you want to be invested in those funds but also find out as a way for you to do that same process perhaps with not as big a charge and fee. Because as I say, a lot of these apps that does it all for you, they're doing it at a premium. They're the three different places that I put my money in terms of savings. So I have, I also set myself short term goals, like for example, I want to buy a new car. So I need to save 3,000 pounds for that new car. At the moment, I only have about 1,000 pounds towards that new car. Um, and then I have to save the extra 2,000 pounds. So what I'm actually doing is putting away about £300 a month for the next six to seven months and then that should get me to my £200,000 goal. So I love that. So again, she's thinking about a major purchase of car. She's actually using the principle of a sinking fund there. So again, in your budget, 
put aside money for things that you know you want to have as long-term or short-term goals. She's putting aside a certain amount of money every single month so that when that big purchase comes, she's not tempted to put it on credit that's going to be more expensive or put it on a credit card. Really great habit and she's thinking about it very smartly. And that brings me on to my next point, which is staying within your means. Getting things on finance isn't always necessarily the worst thing in the world, if you can afford it. I have my kitchen on finance, for example. I'm going to pause it there. Don't try not to get onto finance, even if you can afford it. It's got to be, you've got to weigh up the benefit to you in life. And I can say that to you, someone who's been in debt, we've had car payments, the works. And now that we don't have that, I can tell you the financial obligation and strain on your budget, especially if you want to do things differently in life. Um, even if you can afford the payment, can you actually afford the lifestyle that is maybe committing to you for three, five, ten years as well? I don't want to get a car on finance, for example, because the finance option on cars is actually really expensive. So the bigger the deposit you put down, the less you pay in interest. It's the same as a mortgage. We have our TV on a scheme that's called Buy Now, Pay Later. And actually, we bought it, I think, in November. And then it's eight, nine months you don't have to pay anything and then after the nine months you have to start paying interest and then start paying off the TV but what we're doing is paying it off before the nine months end so that way we don't pay any interest know where your budget is know what you can actually afford stop with this keeping up with the Joneses we all have to have everything brand spanking new no you don't live within your means so the only flip side I would say is she talked about the TV example of you know nine months paying it off before there's interest great that she's doing that I would have liked to have said could we have had a sinking fund just the same way we're doing with the car principle just because it's a smaller amount it seems doesn't mean that we should want to spread it out over months and months it might not seem a lot but it's actually 50 pounds that you could be putting into your investment ISA or putting towards your car and getting towards your car purchase in like five or six months rather than however long it would take or the year so think about anything really if there's a way that you can sinking fund it and get there you're not being tempted to take it on credit you're not being tempted to put it on a credit card either you're also not signing up for interest-free schemes as well which will show on your credit report they'll do a credit check to make sure you can pay you know you've not missed payments with anyone else so be aware think about even for the smaller purchase as well just because it's a smaller amount and you know you're going to pay it off in four or five months why not just wait the four or five months and do it so that's the one area i would say i'd love to see sinking funds for these smaller items the same mindset as the larger items that she has i don't have to worry about not having fun and not having a good time just because i'm saving money that's so important right life doesn't stop just because you're paying off your debt paying off anything and you still got to have fun with your money that's the whole point have the great habits reap the rewards and still enjoy your money but at the end of the day if i can't afford to do something i won't do it sometimes we slip up i get it sometimes we just want to treat ourselves sometimes we want to have a crazy night out and we just go mental and this month's savings is not happening and don't ever feel guilty about doing that like everyone has their weaknesses trust me i have yeah it's just how i live my life that's all so that was really interesting to watch i say her salary she didn't go into too much detail about the literal breakdown towards food petrol and everything like that i would have loved to see actually how much they're paying for some of these essentials as well more so that as us looking at it watching it can get a feel for actually some of the comparable costs to our own wage our own lifestyle where we are in the uk a couple of things to note i love the fact she's investing love the fact she's saving so we've got those great habits and they are the priority as well in our budget she breaks it all down she makes sure she invests every month on autopilot so it does it all for her the only thing i'd like to see on investments is i want you to know what you're actually investing in i want you to make an active choice don't allow somebody else to make the decision for you make sure you, you're happy to invest in those funds those choices regardless of what you think the reward could be make sure it fits in with your goals when you want access to the money your risk i tend to believe some of these automatic investors like money box there tends to be higher charges on their funds and fees because they're doing a lot of the work for you. They're selecting the investments and you're reaping the rewards. So bear that in mind. Also, I'd love to see her understand how investments work a bit better. It's not free money. We're not being given money. It's only the day that we actually sell the investments and pull it out as cash. That's when you effectively gain that money. So bear that in mind. This isn't something that will, like the 63 pounds is the minimum now that she's gonna get profit. It could go down, it could go up. 
depending on the value that day when she actually wants to cash out. But hopefully if you leave it long term, you are seeing a build up and growth. That's, that's the whole point of it really year on year. And the thing to bear in mind is the cost of opportunity that you could have used that money for. So that £50 invested instead, well, she could be looking at actually at a larger pot of investments, maybe even seeing 11% relative because of the amount of funds she was able to buy with that extra £50 rather than pay off the TV. So it's all about comparison. Sinking funds are fantastic for those big purchases like cars, but also really great for things of smaller natures, Christmas, birthdays, uh, TVs, anything that you want to do in life that you're planning for. I'd love to see a sinking budget to make sure it's cash flowed and we're not relying on our credit kind of to get us through even if it is zero percent. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you have, please be sure to hit subscribe button. As always, I cover everything to do with personal finance, investing and success mindset. So if you're thinking about you know improving your finances, if you want someone to keep you motivated, work towards those great goals and also, I really try and give you the high level mindset that will allow you to win with your money, your finances, starting side hustles, but just overall things that you can put in your life that will make it on your terms. I'll allow you to design life as you want it with the money, the health, the wealth, everything. We're all about prosperity on this channel. So I really hope you'd hit subscribe, join me on this journey, and why not even give it a thumbs up so it allows somebody else to maybe find it in the algorithm. So if you have enjoyed, particularly about budgeting, never fear, I've got tons of things that you can check out. You have over 250 videos on this channel. Fancy a binge watch of any of my videos, go ahead, join in. There's absolutely loads you can pick from, including setting up investment ISAs, how to budget, how to invest, even how to start you know, a business in the UK. The other thing is, particularly with budgeting and some of the topics I've covered on this video, I have a course called Budget Success Bootcamp. You actually get my autopilot money spreadsheet system in that. So it's seven or eight tabs of a spreadsheet allows you to pay off debt, budget, work towards financial freedom, whole host of information in that spreadsheet that you can make it relevant to your life exactly. You get that within that course and that course will teach you how to smarter budget, how to work towards savings goals, pay off debt, pay off your mortgage early. Everything is in that course. It's like your PT for your money and your budget. The other course I have is Investing Made Simple. So if you're wanting somebody to guide you through the stock market basics, how to set up investment accounts, why we should be investing with part of our money, go and check Check out that course as well. It's a great bundle, both of them. If you're looking for someone to give you that hands-on, one-on-one, it's me in front of the camera to you and I hope you'd really enjoy them. So go and check them out as well if I can help you a little bit more deeper than I can on this YouTube channel. So thank you so much for watching and I'll be back very soon.